Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Webs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm gonna show you a simple example of how to store a file to the internal storage in Android, which means a primary memory. In the last video, I was talking about the concept behind this. I will include a link to that video in the description text below. So what I have here is a main activity. Let's take a look at its layout. Username, password. My idea is that when you click on the save button, this username and the password data is gonna be returned to some file and then there is a go to b click on this go to b button it's gonna take you to activity underscore second dot xml whose layout is like this there's a load button there's a previous button so here again if i click load over here the data is gonna be loaded from the file inside this username and inside this password feed over here if i click previous it's gonna take me back to my activity underscore main dot xml this is the whole idea so again for these buttons save and go to b have an on click attribute that's gonna call these two methods public void save and public void next same way for my second activity which is activity underscore second dot xml the load button the previous button there are on click attributes that are gonna call public void load over here and public void previous over here and if you guys notice there's nothing great just an explicit intent written over here to call main activity dot class from the second activity dot java and call the second activity dot class from the main activity dot java so this is the overall idea now when i hit the save button this is where all the work should be performed about saving the file so the first thing i have is my edit text which is username and password which is this two edit text that you see over here and then if you go back i can simply initialize them by saying find view by id and that takes care of everything so now let's first see how to save the file the first thing I need to do is extract the data from this edit text which is username so I'm gonna simply say string text one is username dot get text which gives me an editable so I need to convert that to a string by saying dot to string I need to replicate the same step and get the password inside a string text two over here so at this point text one contains the username for example say vivs and text2 contains the password for example say 123 so we need to write both these pieces of data so I'm gonna call open file output which is gonna be responsible for writing data so as you guys notice there's a second method which we're gonna use I'm gonna say open file output the name of the file that we wanna store the data inside I'm gonna say vivs.txt over here and then the mode which means who else can see the data returned by this app I'm gonna say context.mode private which means only my app can see all the data now this is gonna give me an object of file output stream which I'm gonna say as file output stream FOS now if you guys are from a Java background then you know very well what file output stream does otherwise for others let me tell you this file output stream is an object that is responsible for writing data to files in Java so this is gonna directly give you methods to write data for example I can go down and simply say file output stream to dot write and as you guys notice this directly writes data to that file but there is something weird over here you guys notice it says write byte buffer which is a byte array and then it says write int one byte it's talking about writing just one byte or writing a byte array there is nowhere a mention of writing string over here right so what we have here is text one and text two are basically strings so we need to convert them to bytes so let me say right over here take our string which is text one and then I'm gonna say dot get bytes now same way I need to write the other one which I'm gonna say file output stream dot write text two dot get bytes the same way and that takes care of writing both now there is however one problem when you run these two methods one after the other what is gonna be written inside the file is something like this webs123 the username first and then the password what we need is a space in between so that we can distinguish what is the username and what is the password and probably try to extract this from our file so for that what I'm gonna do here going down over here I'm gonna append a space at the end of username now if you guys remember strings cannot be modified directly in Java so what I'm gonna do is something something like this text1 equals to text1 plus an empty space that's all so this time text one actually contains a reference to webs space and that is exactly what is going to be written over here when I say file out to stream dot write text one dot get bytes web space will be written and then 
one two three will be written over the second step now I'm sure you guys have been observing there are some nice red lines over here and you guys notice it says unhandled exception blah 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 so when you're trying to open a file there is a chance that that file is not found or cannot be created because of some incorrect permissions and stuff like that so in those cases there can be an exception so you gotta handle that press control 1 and say surround with try catch and now as you guys notice it says file not found exception which means if something goes wrong at this statement over here this catch will be executed and here you can write a message or print a toast or do something that tells the user that hey the file was not found let me take these two statements and again, again paste them inside this right below this so here I'm gonna paste them and again there are some red lines now writing data also causes another type of exception so I'm gonna say control 1 try to handle this by saying add catch clause to surrounding try statement and what this does is adds another catch over here that says IO exception now remember it is not necessary that your file will be completely written successfully right let us let's just say you're trying to write 1 GB of data from your app to your file of course which you're not gonna do but what happens if your app or your mobile suddenly restarts in between right so in those kind of cases what you can have is this cat statement getting executed which says that hey for some reason the operation did not execute successfully and that's what the IO exception is all about so based on these two things we have written the data successfully now all we need to do is close stuff so now I'm gonna say file output stream dot close now input streams and output streams are just like taps connected between your house and the tank so if you keep the tap open you're gonna waste water in other words if you keep the file output stream or the file input stream open you're gonna waste resources on your device so you gotta make sure that you close it but this is not the correct way to close things remember there can be an exception at this step or there can be an exception at this step which means that if an exception occurs this statement over here will never be executed hence what I'm gonna do is use some clause, clause called finally over here I'm gonna say finally like this now if you guys remember from a Java background finally is a statement which always executes it is like hey I don't care if you have an exception or not but I'm gonna run anyway it's that kind of statement so inside this we can say file out stream dot close and that will ensure that whether our app runs successfully whether our app crashes the file output stream will always be closed giving a better user you can say resource usage in terms of device right so let's see again there's a red line over here it says local variable blah 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 now if you guys notice this file output stream is over here I'm gonna put null over here to this value and that should be pretty good again there is an error it says unhandled exception now even while closing there can be some exception so again press control 1 surround with try catch and that takes care of handling that exception so this is the kind of code you need to write data to your app now at this point you're basically done writing data so you can say save it successfully now it would be very good if you can actually tell where the file was saved how do you do that very simple make a file object over here call it file file equals to null so which directory is this file getting saved that's our question so I'm gonna say file equals to there is a method in Android that says get files dir in other words give me the directory where the files are gonna be saved and this directly gives me the file directory and this gives an indication of where things are saved so here I can directly say something like saved successfully plus file over here dot to string so there's no need to call to string you can directly say file I think yep that should work pretty well so this is gonna give me the directory or the folder inside which our wivs.txt got saved we can also go ahead and actually append this something like this by saying wivs.txt and that would give me the exact path so let us see how this thing runs now remember for all the exceptions that we have here it's best practice to actually log them while development purposes and for production purposes you can probably have a message displayed to the user in some dialog fragment saying something happened e .to string. so let me copy paste this so at this point my username password I'm gonna put the username as waves over here the password maybe as something like one two three four five six 
and I'm gonna click save over here which is gonna execute all the code that we wrote over here for saving our file it says saved successfully oops I didn't even see the message again if I click save let me see what it says a uh, data slash data slide dot webs files webs dot txt so that was the URL let's try to actually see if there is the data I'm gonna go to the DDMS perspective over here select the process that is running the slide dot webs over here go to data and go there to data slash data slash my package name just like dot webs here if you guys notice there's the files over here and then there is the webs dot txt so let me actually download this to my computer because this is currently inside the emulator I'm gonna click pull a file from the device over here at the top I'm gonna put this inside my music folder select this file just save it and let's actually see how that file looks so going to music here webs dot txt and as you guys notice it says webs and one three so now you guys probably understand the reason why I put a space over here between the username and the password so that they both can be separated because then we can extract the data easily from them right so in the next video I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to read this file and pull the data from that file in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video let me let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below and subscribe to our channel I'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day